Hey yo, Stoic here. Hey, welcome to The Bedrock Guide. In this tutorial, we're gonna be doing a villager trading hall. We're gonna be talking about the different trades available, how to get the trades that you want, and how to get the discounts for the best trades around. So there are 13 different workstations available for your world. So each one of these workstations you can use on a personal level, but they're also used by the villagers and they will define what kind of trades that they've got. So you get the fletching table, the cartography table, smithing table, blast furnace, smoker, brewing stand, grinding stone, the lectern, the cauldron, the composter, the barrel, the stone cutter, and the loom. Hey, if I missed any, shoot me a comment. Let me know which one I've missed. I'm pretty sure I got them all, but who knows? Maybe I missed something. With that, we're gonna go take a look at how to get the trades that you want. Some of them are pretty easy. Some of them might require a little bit of work to get. But anyways, let's let's move over to some of our villagers. So you'll notice that I've got the iron farmer used in one of my previous tutorials, and I left it pretty much open that we can manipulate these into any trades that we want. And you can see that I've already got my lectern in place, so I've got librarians now. The farmers are jumping around, we've got these different tool makers and armorers and weapon makers over here. And yeah, everyone's got a little bit of different uh, swag and uh, decorations on their faces when it comes to their trades. All right, you'll notice that I stepped away from the village. I just don't wanna mess up the trades that I've got going on over there because they'll start linking. Unfortunately, I had that set up over there and they started linking to everything. But you can see that we've got kind of a miniature setup where we've placed our villager from, from earlier. And you can see it's bouncing around and it's linked to this composter. Well, if we come over to this side, we can open this up, get a little better view. And we can break this composter and you can see that it got some thunderbolts over its head. It is angry that it can't work. So if we put in a new table, we can change which trade that it's gonna have. So you can see that something linked to it and we can click on this. We now have a tool smith, which is related to the smithing table. If we didn't want this in this spot, we could put in a lectern and we'll see that it got upset. It didn't have a job and now it has now changed into a librarian. So we can easily change which one it is. You want to change each of your workstations one at a time. That way they're always linking to the one right in front of them. If you start deleting all of the workstations around, then they will start to link to other workstations, which is not what we want. So we can check to see that this librarian has loyalty to. Not really a trade we want. I know I don't want it. So what we can do is come outside of our building we can break two blocks right here and go down two. And then we can break out these two as well. We'll have some water coming through. Not a big deal because we do have a grown up villager. It's not going to go anywhere. Grab a sticky piston and put it one block below. So we have a little gap there. And then put a lever on the side of your sticky piston. We can use that lever then to extend that sticky piston. It will grab onto that lectern. As soon as we hit this lever, the villager will lose its trade and then it will reconnect to this lectern that's in a new position. So it got angry, reconnected, it's pretty happy now, and we can go over here and check. And now we have bookshelves from this librarian. If you don't like what that looks like, we can bring it back up. It will lose its connection and then regain the connection. You can look at it, bookshelves again, all right. So we'll just keep doing this until we find the trades that we want. Maybe it's efficiency five, or maybe it's Oh, I don't know. It could be Mending. Yep. Mending is a very popular book and you can set up all your villagers to do something. Um, out of the essence of time, we're just going to say channeling one is exactly what I was looking for. Yep. Channeling one. That's what I wanted. Yep. 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 <laughs> Once we found the trade that we want, we want to come over here and lock it in with our librarian. You can see that this librarian wants 24 paper. Now this villager is always going to be a librarian. If you break the workstation, it might lose its its hat. But once you place once it links to a new lectern, it will become this exact same librarian with these exact same trades. So once that's locked in, you just want to break your piston and then fill everything back in. 
and then you can go on to the next one. And this is how you can get new trades every time. Sometimes if you just break this, you're gonna put a lot of wear and tear on your tools, or this lectern might fall in with the librarian. So <laughs> that's no fun either. All right, so some of the key trades that we're gonna to wanna to have right away is you know some farmers. Some farmers can give us some good trades. You've probably got some crops going in the background. You can collect all this stuff, bring it over here and start trading your carrots for emeralds. And then you can get probably better food as a result. But this farmer is very important because it has apples. And apples are a good segue to the next part. And that is to get your villager discounts. So hopefully you have made the journey and you've stumbled across an igloo. And this is one of the cool things about Minecraft is that they have created these little buildings out here to kind of tell you how to play the game if you don't spend a lot of time on YouTube or any of the other Wikipedia sites. But you can see that not all igloos, but most of them will have this nice carpeted floor. And guess what? There's a trap door here. There's a secret entrance to some secret experiments. And you can see that we have got the game telling us that we can convert a zombie villager into a villager. Or if we wanted to, we could let this zombie create a zombie villager. <laughs> they can go back and forth just like this. So what we'll do is I'm just going to let this these two become friends. And because I'm in hard mode, this villager is going to become a zombified villager, just like that. So the other thing we're gonna find in this area is a chest, and it's gonna have a golden apple. Unless someone has raided it already, we're gonna find a golden apple. And we're also gonna find some apples as well as some extra gold. And we'll take that because we're gonna wanna use that later. The other cool thing that we're gonna find is this brewing station with a splash potion of weakness. This is key. These two items right here are gonna convert our zombified villagers into regular villagers. So one problem we have already is that we only have one apple, so we can only convert one of them. One nice thing, and I'll put, I'll grab another one here in a little bit, is we've got a little trick to make this thing extend out a little bit longer instead of just one. So the plan here is just to hit that thing with weakness and then give it a golden apple. You can start here in the sizzle. It's converting into a regular villager. I'm not exactly sure how long it takes. I think it varies a little bit, but it will take a little bit of time for this thing to convert. So I'll wait here until it's done. All right, so this guy is back in action. Welcome back. And you can see already that we've got discounted trades already. And there are some formulas out there. I'll leave it to the major experts on this. But every time, if you don't like, every time you convert this guy into a villager and, or zombie and then back into a villager, these larger numbers will get smaller. And I think you can convert them up to five times to really get this number down. You can see that some of the specialty trades go down significantly. So instead of just using one splash potion to hit maybe four of these, I think four, if they're close enough, you can get four. You can string this out to 16 different villagers and this is the way we're gonna do it. So what we can do is clean out this cauldron right here and then grab this potion and we're gonna throw it inside this cauldron. You can see that it filled it up. It's kind of hard to see, but it did. And I think it only filled out about filled up about a quarter of the cauldron. What we can do then is grab 16 arrows, and that's about a quarter of a stack, and we can apply this weakness to our arrows. And now all we have to do, and let me just grab an extra apple here, is we can individually shoot some of our villagers. Now, you don't want to hit them too hard, <laughs> but it has the weakness potion applied to it. And now we've got the golden apple on it. It is going to be converted. So instead of just using the splash potion once or tw once to hit up to four, we're going to string this out into 16 different shots. 
So we know we need apples and we can definitely get them from our villager friends here. And what we also need is a whole bunch of gold. And maybe you found some ancient ruins out there, some ruined portals. And, and that's going to get you a couple blocks, but it's not going to be enough for all the apples that you're going to need, the golden apples that you're going to need. So what you can do is just build a quick little starter gold farm. And I'll leave a link in the in the upper right hand corner for this farm and you can just get it built real quick and we'll start pulling in some zombified piglins and zombified piglins love to drop gold and they also like to go leave <laughs> their gold swords um in this trap this is a really small so very starter-esque if you want something bigger you'll get a whole lot more and yep here it is we're just gonna bring it in i'll leave that tutorial to tell you all the mechanics for what's going on but this is going to be a great way to get more gold for you so you're telling me i can't find an igloo and i don't blame you sometimes they're hard to find you can actually make your own potions but you got to go to the nether find a fortress and get some blaze blazes so that you can get some blaze dust and then you got to find these spiders out and about and you got to get a whole bunch of spider eyes you also got to find some sugar and some brown mushrooms in order to make a fermented eye. This is all in the brewing guides that you can find out there. But you're going to need a little bit more in order to make this splash potion. So all that work just to make the splash potion. That's why the arrows are so good at making them last a long, long time. Because we only have 20 villagers. So we only really need to brew once. So we can make this work. But... The other thing we want to do is show you how to do that inside of this villager trading hall. Okay, so you've got all of your villagers in place and you've locked in their trades. You know what you're going to want. You're tired of spending all this money and emeralds to get the things that you need. It's time for a discount. So let's get you that discount. One of the primary things you're going to want to do is trade up your cartographer because the final level five trait is going to be name tags. These are pretty important because once you convert these villagers into zombified villagers and you happen to leave the area or log off, your villagers are going to be gone because they were monsters. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and type in a name for each one of these and we're gonna do this. Yep, learn how to spell too, there we go. And we're just gonna name each one, you can do it individually, but I don't wanna risk losing all that time spent getting these villagers in place, and that'll ruin my iron farm as well. I don't wanna ruin my trades as well. It took me a long time to get that mending one over there. So now that we've got names for all of them, they should always remain and be persistent in this world. The next thing we gotta do is convert these into zombies. So these villagers cannot hop out of these little areas because of the opening that's provided. It is just, just small enough. So that means big zombies can't get in and villagers cannot get out, but they can still be right next to each other. So I'm gonna do a big, big swooping motion here with, with this zombie. This one's gonna just take care of the whole group. Sometimes they get distracted by me, so I'll move away. And you can just let this thing do its thing. And you might have to give it a little nudge sometimes, just jump down, push it. And it should go after each one of these, um, these villagers. There we go. And it'll just, just gonna start walking down the line. And if they aren't in the right spot you can get down there and help that zombie out if you only want to do a couple at a time that works too but yeah this one we're gonna let go all the way around the room because i want to convert all of these into major discounts while this thing is working nudge this thing around a little bit you can see that our villagers are still name tagged so they're still who we want them to be so while you're doing this, you might decide, you know what, I only wanna do half of this group because I still wanna collect iron. When it gets to that 10th one, let's leave it there. We're gonna, we're gonna get rid of that zombie and 
then we're going to be able to keep all of our other ones safe and keep this iron farm moving because as soon as we drop below 10 villagers this farm is no more all right so we've got our bow and we've got arrows of weakness it's the only arrows i've got here so it should shoot but we can just gently use our bow and arrow and we can start converting these zombies now i would do one at a time they're probably because we have so many lecterns there is a very good chance that they will change their lectern locations and so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to dig them out and place them in front of our villagers here in a little bit but let's go ahead and i'm gonna convert all of them now because i want to get this party going all right you can see that we're starting to convert a lot of our villagers back into their original forms and we've maintained the trades that they had before you can see now instead of paying 30 emeralds in a book for a mending book i only have to pay five which is crazy that's exactly what we want we can start to see also that these will all start changing as well here's another one let's check them out yep i'd locked this one in earlier this one got oh almost half of the entire <laughs> emerald usage is down and our paper is down as well so on these larger emerald amounts i'm going to be doing this a couple times to get them all the way down all right so each one of our librarians are now back they're looking good and healthy they have unlinked from their station so they probably link to a different one so the way to figure this out is we're going to come back out we're going to get rid of any zombies that are already here and we're going to take care of each one of these locations we're going to pick them all up we're going to take them inside because it's going to be easier to see let's go ahead and come in here drop in one of them you can see that this one got the first one so we're going to go back outside and place our lectern now it will work this is important because it affects our iron farm we need to have 75 percent of our villagers working and right now iron farm's not working because we don't have 75% of them. We have 20 here and they're unlinked. So what we're gonna do is find the next one, that one over there, break it, go back outside. And we're gonna repeat this process until all of our librarians and all of our farmers have their workstations back. All right, you probably heard that noise. All of our villagers have the right workstations now. So now we're pulling in the iron that we're supposed to be getting. And we can also come over here. I went ahead and hit this villager a couple more times with weakness, converted it into a zombie, converted it back. And now we've got our trades down to one emerald in a book for amending. That is nuts. It's exactly what we're looking for. That's how you get those super discounts on your villagers here. And yeah, this is looking great. So just in time for that sunset. All right, thanks everyone for joining me on this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. I'll put a link in there for a couple of my friends' villager discounts as well. They have some really great videos and I'd love to share their content. But anyways, yeah, hit that subscribe button and hit that like button and leave some comments. That traffic definitely helps the channel. All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye.